Uh, final slide here, you know, how to attract talent. And we've already covered off some of these points, right? But you really need to identify exactly who you need. That's that's key. Um, and then think about, you know, the flexibility considerations. Where do they need to be to execute the type of work that is demanded by your clients or that you're selling to the market? Um, conscious of the value of flexibility, um, you know, working offshore, uh, but also flexibility for staff that work from home. Uh, and being conscious of the exact role that you're hiring and where the flexibility can be utilised for that role. I think for us personally, we, we think very hard around that, um, the specific role, where that person needs to be, can they work from home or not? Um, and then certainly once we've identified what's appropriate for that role, then we like to give maximum flexibility uh, when it makes sense because typically that uh, does lead to, you know, more motivated staff. Again, it's got to make sense for the role and certainly when there's situations that everyone needs to be in the office or as a collective, uh, it absolutely needs to happen. Uh, so certainly it depends on the role uh, and the situation as well. Um, and obviously with flexibility means paying less financially, no travel time, uh, no commuting expenses uh, for our staff that work from home. Uh, they're the two main things that they say they really enjoy. Um, I think finally there as well as an appraiser, and this is something that, you know, can be pushed, you know, the last three bullet points in particular to college graduates or somebody that's still at college or university, uh, I think as opposed to going to a big corporation, obviously in a smaller firm of one to 99 staff, the pathway to equity, along with working with senior staff directly, uh, that's certainly something that us as a collective in the appraisal industry can offer, as opposed to bigger firms uh, that often take a lot of talent uh, in terms of um, you know corporate investment banking uh, along those lines. And then finally, there you know something that's you know very interesting. I think longer term is given the you know the demographics of the appraiser and valuation industry, um, and then also the demand fundamentals that we're seeing. You know, consistently we're hearing and seeing results today that there's a lack of supply of quality labour. Um, so the impact there that that will have on pricing, um, you know, in terms of valuations and appraisals ahead, and then also that flows through to compensation that can be paid uh, to those key staff. Uh, that's it for me, Jim or Michael, any further comments uh, on attractive so, talent there? So one very quick that I make, just to make sure we truly connected the dots for our audience. So. So a partnership with your university, either your alma mater or the one that you want, can obviously be a source of talent, but you can start very flexibly. Just do an internship program um, or um, like the person who just asked about the course, your course itself can be the most powerful vehicle for identifying and recruiting that talent. You teach the course, you observe the students, Typically, at least a few will become truly star students who are interested. And those are the ones you then invite to intern during the school year or during summer. And then you hire them, right? And then that's the process that you can fully control. It's extraordinarily cost effective. Um, you're involved at every step of the process. And you actually see them live in action even before they set foot uh at your firm as an intern so um that can be very powerful especially if you're inclined to teaching but then if not you can always just start with an internship program with a local university or even a remote university that you really like uh, and want to try so that can definitely be very valid as well again less conventional but again desperate times call for desperate measures so i, I think it can work very well yeah, get creative and get entrepreneurial. Jim, any closing remarks from you? Yeah, just two little quick points. We went the entire webinar and never mentioned AI. So that's pretty interesting to me. Uh, AI could have a, a big effect on a lot of the things we've talked about today. And um, just wanted to throw that out there. That could be another whole topic. Uh, but the last thing is in terms of recruiting, this is enjoyable work and I don't just, you know, I, I don't just say that because I think, well, I'm kind of some nerd that enjoys this stuff. No, I think this is universally enjoyable work and fascinating work. 
uh, which is one of the reasons I got into it. And I've worked at various parts of, you know, the finance and, and accounting uh, profession during my career. And this just, it, it's just very fun to do. And so I think we've got to, we've got to get that message out too, that, Hey, this is a very enjoyable thing to do. And yeah, it's work, but it's something that is going to make you feel good and satisfied. Yeah. Totally agree, Jim. And, you know, certainly that's my personal experience, probably Michael's as well. Uh, ultimately, we are a service-based business that is founded upon people, processes, some technology in there. Uh, but I really enjoy uh, recruiting. Uh, and also the next webinar we'll, we'll be doing in this series, we'll then be looking at retaining staff, uh, training them how you retain them after you find them and recruit them. Uh, so that's it for today. Uh, please, anybody that uh, would be interested in talking about any of these points further, reach out to either Jim, myself or Michael ahead. Uh, in summary today, onshore, offshore staff, work from home staff, uh, certainly considerations that are available to you as well as hiring graduates from university. Uh, but there's many factors to consider uh, to do it in the right uh, fashion, conscious uh, of the many pros and cons. I'll hand now back to our moderator, uh, Amanda.